All right, Mr. Medellin here, you guys, Mr. M. And today we're gonna to be covering direct capture and indirect capture, indirect conversion and direct conversion with flat panel detection systems. So this is all part of the digital imaging processing. And remember that you're, you're converting X-ray energy into some type of recorded signal that's then gonna be used to go ahead and compute the X-ray image uh, by the computer, right? And again, we're using what's called a flat panel detector. So today I'm gonna to go ahead and I'm gonna go over TFTs and CCDs, and I might even throw CMOS systems in there as well. So we'll talk about indirect capture and direct capture. I'm gonna to try to do my best just to keep it simple without getting too technical. So we're gonna talk about direct capture or direct conversion. Okay. And remember, you have X-ray energy that's leaving the patient, and what it's gonna do is it's gonna hit a photoconducting material, and this is known as amorphous selenium. So the amorphous selenium is a photoconductor. All right, so the photoconductor is amorphous selenium. Now, amorphous selenium is going to convert the X-rays, all right, the X-rays into an electrical charge. The electrical charge is then going to go ahead and hit a TFT. A TFT stands for a thin film transistor. It's like a little switch that can be turned on and off within a millionth of a second. Um, but the TFT, the thin film transistor, is gonna be connected to an ADC. If you've seen the other video on computer radiography, there's an ADC, an analog digital converter. So it's gonna convert X-ray analog signal into electrical charge, then that charge is gonna be sent to the analog digital com uh, converter and then it's sent to the computer for processing. So this is gonna be known as direct capture. So I'll write out the term amorphous selenium here. So amorphous selenium. So amorphous selenium is gonna be the photoconducting material. So this is direct capture or direct conversion. So I'm gonna draw a line here and I'm gonna put indirect capture. So indirect capture or indirect conversion, same thing, you're gonna still have X-ray signal that's gonna go through the patient, but this time, this time, it's gonna hit a scintillation material. So I'll write this down, scintillator. So a scintillator has phosphors, and in this case, they're using what's called cesium iodide. So cesium iodide is a common scintillation material. Back in the days, we used to use gadolinium oxysulfide, but now, we use cesium iodide because when it produces the light, the light is going to be focused more primarily in one direction versus gadolinium oxysulfide, which kind of went all over the place, and that's called light spread. So with cesium iodide, you have less light spread, more light is going to hit the area that it needs to be for the detection system to pick it up. So scintillators are going to produce light. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and make this yellow here. So you're gonna have light that's being produced, correct? Now, it's gonna hit another material, another device, and the other device, you guys, is called a photodiode. So the pho photodiode here, in this case, is made up of amorphous selenium, uh, silicon, sorry guys. So amorphous silicon. So the amorphous silicon, in this case, is the photodiode material. Now, photodiode materials, they convert light, they convert light, into electronic signal, all right? So now you have this light and now you're gonna have these electrons, right? Now the electrons are then gonna hit the TFT, the thin film transistor, and then it's gonna go to an analog digital converter and then again to the computer for processing, all right? So again, the TFTs are the image receptors. So if we were to take this apart here, this is actually an indirect capture system, and the only reason I know is because I'm, er I'm nerdy enough to read the, the owner manual, right? So I was reading it, and it says that this flat panel detector has a layer of cesium iodide. So you can't see it, but when x-rays go through and it hits it, there's light being produced inside. If you were to peel off this piece of carbon fiber, right, you're gonna see a bunch of TFTs. The TFTs are little receptors that are recording the signal, recording the charge. Now the TFTs are gonna be like a checkerboard pattern here. So the TFTs are the image receptors themselves. So think about it, you have a light conversion step. You have an extra step compared to direct capture. So this is why indirect capture is considered to have how many steps? Two steps, all right? So 
The extra step is a light conversion step. Direct capture doesn't have that. And here's the thing, you guys, the giveaway is this. As soon as you see a scintillator, you know those x-rays are gonna be converted into light. So any light production step is an extra step. So I'm gonna put it here, indirect, indirect capture, we'll say two step, all right? Now, <coughs> direct capture, we'll say one step process. And again, it's eliminating the light production step, okay? Now, it's a fixed component. We don't get to choose, you guys, whether it's direct capture or indirect capture. In the field, we really don't care. All right, so this is primarily, you guys, to help us on the exams, on the ART exam, to know the difference in the technology. Now, there's another device that's known as a CCD, a charge couple device. This is something that we mentioned in the CR systems, right? So that's contained on a matrix array. So let me go ahead and I'm gonna draw the X-ray signal coming down. So this is exit radiation. And again, it's gonna hit a scintillator. It's gonna hit the CCM iodide. And guess what it's gonna do? It's gonna produce what? It's gonna produce light, all right? So the light is gonna be produced. And this time, the light is gonna hit a focusing lens. It's gonna hit an optical lens. It's gonna hit a lens. It's gonna go ahead and focus the light. So this lens now is gonna shoot the light downward. Like this, it's gonna funnel the light, all right? Now the light is gonna bounce off a mirror. So there's a mirror in this system, right? And guess what the light's gonna do, you guys? It's gonna bounce off the mirror and it's gonna go into the CCD themselves, which is gonna look like this. Okay, all right. So now the light is gonna be sent to the CCD. Now guess what's connected to the CCD to help convert that analog signal, okay, in ADC. So the CCD, guys, is connected to an ADC, and then that's gonna be sent to the computer for processing. So the analog digital converter is converting that analog signal to something that the computer can read for processing. So notice, everything here is using an ADC, all right? So this here, you guys, this is indirect capture. So TFTs can go either way. They can either be direct capture or indirect capture. The only thing that makes them different is if there's gonna be a scintillator involved, right? So the cesium iodide, we said, was the scintillator. All right, now, <clears throat> I'm gonna add this, you guys. I was thinking about it, but I'm gonna add this. So there's another receptor device that's out there called CMOS. CMOS is, is known as complementary metal, uh, metal oxide semiconductor, all right? Now, there's not a whole lot of stuff going on in CMOS in our reading, but what we have to know is that it's indirect capture. So CCDs stand for charged coupled device. It's like a little camera that records the flash of light and with the ADC converts that light into electrical charge. It can be read right by the computer. So the other system that's out there is very similar. You have X-ray signal that comes down. It's gonna hit the scintillator, the cesium iodide. And what's gonna be produced? What do we say every time that you hit a, a scintillator, what's being produced? Light. Okay, so we have light being produced. And guess what? The light okay, is gonna hit the lens again, okay? So it's hitting the lens, and the light is gonna be shot downward. So think about it, you guys. It's the same type of technology, right, that's being used here but the receptor is gonna be a little different. So it's still gonna bounce off a mirror here, and the mirror is gonna send the light to your CMOS, your complementary metal oxide semiconductor. It's almost like a computer chip, and it's recording the signal. And guess what the CMOS is gonna be connected to? An ADC. So connected to the ADC, and then sent to the computer for processing. So here, We've broken down indirect capture and direct capture. I would suggest that you write it out at least 10 times. Just kind of write it out, draw it out if you have to. So the things that people mix up on are amorphous silicon, okay? So this is amorphous silicon, so S-I-L-I-C-O-N, and amorphous selenium, all right? So the way I remember it is amorphous silicon, right? 
Silicon is used in rectifiers. You guys remember that in physics, right? So silicon, the photodiode, diode rectifier, right? So that's how I remember it. So the photodiode is made of amorphous silicon. Amorphous silicon is gonna convert light into the electrical charge here versus amorphous selenium. Amorphous selenium is a photoconducting material. It's gonna convert x-rays into that electrical charge. So that's usually what people get mixed up in in regards to the direct and indirect capture method. So again, I would suggest you write it out at least 10 times, right? Take six times of recording your subconscious mind and say, for me it's nine, 10, 12, sometimes more than that, right? But repetition is gonna be key. But here, you guys, this is a breakdown between direct capture and indirect capture, all right? Again, it could be indirect conversion or direct conversion, it's the same thing. I'm hoping this is gonna help you guys, and uh, again, we'll, we'll do some more videos regarding digital processing as well, okay? Thank you.